All right, guys, we're going to jump into keeping the main thing the main thing. And for the main thing this week, we are wrapping up our discussion on the Bible's biggest simp. Okay, Samson. right there, right there, right there. Simp, you've got to define this. What do you mean by this word? All right, here we go. Mm, all right, so a simp is uh, a guy. Now, it doesn't always have to be a guy, but it's a person that goes out and like shills uh, regurgitates the talking points on behalf of, you know, a larger narrative or, uh, you know, something like that. So, uh, to put it into context, you got a lot of dudes on the internet that will simp for, you know, the feminist movement. Like, yes, you know, girl, you go, all these other guys, they don't know you're strong and you're powerful. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Eh, you see, you're from a different generation. It doesn't yeah, make I, sense to you. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. Doesn't really make sense. Well, this is a thing that happens in you know the 21st century that we live in. Is that you know, yep, you know, we have strong, empowered females, and then a weak beta male class that will go out and flaunt their talking points on their behalf because. You know, there's nothing more that a strong, empowered female needs uh, to get her point across than a effeminate beta man to fight her battles for her. Just saying, dudes. Anyway, okay. moving right along, <laughs> jumping off of that point. So where we left Samson last week, can you give us a little catch up to drop us into the story before we move on? Well, if I remember correctly, we had Samson, the Herculean of God, who is in the Old Testament, in the book of Judges, if anybody wants to go look it up, because uh, he's considered a judge of Israel. He has been given strength uh, beyond absolute compare, and he is flirting around with women. Now, he is a Nazarite. He is supposed to stay within the people of his own country. That is the thing that he is supposed to do. But he is— would've. Yeah, but he is flirting around with the honeys in another country. And so as he's flirting around with them, he already loses one. I believe she's killed because she flirted around with Samson. And so now he's flirting, and, and then he sees a prostitute. Now he's seeing this third gal. By the way, her name's Delilah. And as he sees her, the men of the area say, trick him into telling us what is the source of his strength. And so four times— it wasn't until the fourth time that finally she says, you're lying to me. You won't tell me the truth. You're good, you're good. And he's like, OK, OK, OK. If you cut my hair and uh, I will be like a babe, I will lose all my strength. And so they cut his hair. And sure enough, he loses all of his strength because after three times of her saying, believe it or not, she says all three times, tell me the source of your strength. He does not Comes back a second time. Tell me the source of your strength. He does it. You're lying to me. Tell me the source of your strength. You would think somewhere down the line he would go, why do you want to know? And how come every time I tell you I wake up and that exact scenario is happening? <laughs> Weird. And yet he's blinded. Is he blinded by love? I, I, I don't know what total, he's blinded by. Total strong ranger. There strong ranger, not smart ranger. Not smart ranger. Okay. Anyway, cut his hair. He's done, and we left him that they gouged his eyes out, and they placed him in the mill, removed the oxen that were in the mill, put him on the mill, and he spent his days working the grist mill in, uh, in the city that he was in. That's where we left him. But it did say his hair started to grow back again. Very interesting. And then there was that point that you made last week that I want to hammer on again is that when the Spirit of the Lord left him, he didn't even notice. He, he didn't even notice, no. Which was the which it was a very sad spot to be in. So this week we're gonna pick up. We got our Bible gateway right here. Judges chapter 16, beginning in verse 23. Now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God. And to celebrate, saying, Our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. When the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, Our God has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and, multi and multiplied our slain. 
While they were in high spirits, they shouted, bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called out Samson of the prison, and he performed for them. When they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who, let, who held his hand, put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple so that I may lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of the Philistines were there. And on the roof were about 3,000 men and women watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord. Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Then Samson reached toward the two central pillars on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one side and his left hand on the other. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus, he killed many more when he died than while he lived. Then his brothers and his father's whole family went down to get him. They brought him back and buried him between Zorah and Eshtel in the tomb of Manoah, his father. He had led Israel 20 years. Mm -hmm. Thus ends the life and the legacy of Samson. But there's something that I wanted to point out in the end of his story, just like we did with King David and just like we did with Peter. And that is the fact that when he turned from what he did, the Lord didn't, I just want to point out the Lord didn't uh, save him right from the consequences of his own actions. He had his vow that he took before God. Uh, he broke that side of the vow. There were consequences to the actions that he took. His strength was taken away from him. The Lord did not save him from the consequences of his actions. That being said, when he repented, of good what word, he had done, good word, and, and he turned back toward the Lord, the Lord was just and merciful and gave him an opportunity to serve him again and to avenge himself. Yep. From the situation that he was put in. What would you like to add to that? Um, not, not a whole lot. It, um, I mean, because that's, that's the story, what he did. You used a very, very good word. Uh, he repented the amount of, um, humility that is in that statement. Oh God, just one more time. Could, could you do this? Um, this is, uh, this is a huge thing that we probably ought to talk about. Um, I'm not sure if we did a lot with, with, with David. I do believe we talked about it with Peter, but it is also becomes a very common spot. And that is humility that goes along with, with the change. The, the change that we're talking about is that 180 degree change from the arrogance that they had, that nothing can happen to me. I'm on top of the world. I'm bulletproof at the moment. Um, then go through the rough things that break them down. Peter was broken down. David was broken down. Here we see Samson, uh, the mighty man of God. He's broken down. Uh, people have been making fun of him, laughing at him. He has been uh, the the absolute laughing stock of the Philistines. Uh, where he's at, I mean, he's so bad. They, they he replaced a um, uh, the oxen. That's mm -hmm. what that's what they thought of him. Working the grist did the, mill did the work of a beast of burden. Burden, and, and because this is the Philistines showing that they had conquered him the mighty and this is what they were really after the mighty man of god mm. so in a lot of ways what they were doing was not just jeered at samson but it was see god we can even conquer your man um and and that put him there and so you know he didn't realize that the spirit of the living god had left him but here he gets into a situation and we don't know how many years it had been that that was his work. That's what he did. But eventually he was broken enough and had thought about it long enough that when he was given an opportunity, he still showed his humility to God and said, I've been wrong. Right. 
That's the thing that the, the three guys have that it was it that do you remember that you remember that movie uh, Major League you know and they got the dude that can't hit the curveball and he's got his uh, voodoo that he's doing the whole time and eventually he comes to the end he's screw you Joe Boo I'll do it myself himself. and he finally hit, and he finally hits the home run that's not the situation that we see here where Samson's mad at God because of the situation that he found himself in screw you I'll I'll do it myself it's like you said, the exact opposite of when he, now he realizes I can only do this with God. If I'm to do and that's why anything. He, we're, we're shown that through the prayer. Exactly. Um, Peter through the prayer, David had his time that he prayed. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that we covered it or not, but after David had gone through his fall uh, uh, and, and had the extramarital affair had the woman's husband killed with all the things that David had done. He had to flee for his life because his God allowed his son to almost take over the country. His son's name was Absalom. Anyway, um, he fled for his life. He had to leave the city of Jerusalem. His son took over. It was going to take over the army. Um, he comes back. And as he comes back, there's this man and uh, that as David's right along, this man is up on the hillside and he's always, he's just throwing rocks at David as David's riding along. He's just, he's throwing rocks. And this man is, is just going, you, you, you donkey, you, you, you beast of burden. You're not, you're not, you're even human. And Joab, his general, is riding behind him. He's ready to jump off of his horse and go up and slay this guy. And David says, I'm getting everything I deserve. Coming face to face with the consequences of his actions. Yeah. But it's the attitude that he takes that shows the maturity. The great warrior of God. This yeah. guy is pelting pebbles at him and he should be able to flick it off. But instead... He humbles himself and says, here's the problem. I can't go after that guy. He's right. Yeah. So I just want to leave you guys with this, and I'll probably hammer it on it over the next few weeks in the other screw-ups that we're going to talk about. But if, oh, yeah. you guys, if you guys don't want to find yourself laid low, don't run from God. Because there's a, that's a kind of a little bit of a theme that we're hitting on. Mm -hmm. But if you are in a situation where you're finding yourself laid low. I, it certainly has happened in my life, uh, and I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that it hasn't. Then the other theme that we're seeing is to turn to God. Humble yourself accept, and turn to God. Right, mm -hmm. and accept the responsibility for your own actions mm -hmm. and repent. And repent. That's the legacy that these guys are showing us. And that's what we want to leave with you guys this week. And that's what makes them have great legacies. Absolutely. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of the keeping the main thing the main thing. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Uh, make sure that you're getting subbed up. Give us a follow. And if you would, please share the video with a friend because we're only going to grow with your support. The algorithms certainly aren't going to help us. Nope. Hope you guys come back next week and we'll see you there on the Common Freaking Sense podcast.